Well, welcome to this short tutorial, which is going to talk through uh, the HIP files which were used to make the effects that you've just seen. And we're going to start off with the snow landing on the, the letter spelling out Christmas first. And here's the scene, and I'm going to put this up on the web. There's going to be, uh, and it's all annotated, so it's fairly easy to find your way around. So uh, the heart of it all is uh, the Autodot network here, where we're using the new style particles to create our snow. So let's dive into that and have a look at it. So the animation, the simulation rather, is in two parts. The first part is when the snow is falling down and then some of it is sticking to the ground and to the letters. And then the second part is when the snow is blowing away. So when you're setting up a particle simulation, the first thing you need to think about is an emitter, the thing that's going to create your particles. And in this case, uh, we're using a very basic emitter. And one of the things about uh, the new workflow in Houdini 13 is that it's usually quite a good idea to set up uh, the emission of your particles inside a SOP. And we're doing it here inside this emitter SOP. So let's have a look inside here. And we can see all we're doing is let's, uh, hide other objects. So we've got a box, uh, which we then convert into a volume, and then we scatter some points in. Now at the moment I'm scattering a very small number of points, uh, just 10 points, but I've got a take uh, set up here, which uh, in fact ensures that there are 300 points. So when we actually come to render this out, uh, we'll be using a lot more snow than when, than when we're just testing it. So let me revert that back to the main take. So the other thing I've done here on the scatter is I put in a random seed. I'm using $t here, which is the time. Equally well, you could use $ff or anything else that varies with the frame. And that ensures that at each frame, we get a slightly different arrangement of particles. So having uh, established our emitter, let's have a look and see what we do with it. So it's this side of the of the uh, dot network that we look at first. This is the thing that's causing the snow to fall. So the first thing we have is our emitter. And this is going to emit for the first 240 frames of our simulation. Uh, that's because after that point, uh, the snow is going to get start, start to be blown away. So the source, we just bring in uh, this emitter uh, that we just saw. And we've got an emission type of all points. And that means that uh, for each uh, point in that source, a particle is going to be birthed at every frame, which is why these things are grayed out. Uh, and we give it some initial velocity, uh, some random initial velocity. Uh, but that's pretty much going to be eliminated quite quickly, that initial random burst of, of of velocity because the next thing we've got here is a drag node with an air resistance of six. So what that does is ensure that the particles don't rush around too quickly. That's going to impede their movement. So let me just show you uh, what would happen here if we turn off the gravity and then we turn off all of these other nodes. And you can just get a sense of what uh, what happens just from that initial. So we can see the things are birthed, they move out a little bit, and then they grind to a halt because that uh, that drag is making them slow down unless they've got a force applied to them. So let's re-enable the gravity and then we can see what that does. And we can see that that initial motion is really not having much effect because the gravity is taking over very quickly. So we need to give them a little bit of a boost. So the next thing we do is use a pop wind node to give the particles some noisy motion. And I've not used any VEX expressions here. We're just using the standard noise functions here. And you'll notice that the wind velocity is zero. Uh, the, the random movement is all that there's going to be. So if I unclick that, we can see the effect of that. 
and now we can see we've got that characteristic sort of snow-like jittering as, as the particles gently drift down. The next thing we want to do is for them to stick to some parts of our letters. So let me just go back to this and have a look at those letters. Uh, sorry, not that. Uh, this. So this is where we prepare those letters. So we bring in that uh, Xmas uh, letters. I do some poly splits to give us some more groups and some more surfaces rather. Uh, this is because I want the snow to be able to stick to the, in this sort of V-shaped bits here and here. So I've created extra geometry here to allow me to stick there. And there are two types of surface here. There's the sort of flat surfaces on which the snow is going to settle. And then there are some other surfaces where it's going to slide. And one like this and this, it's going to slide off. So we want to create, uh, we've created two groups here. There's a letter group and also I'm bringing in, sorry, I should have said, the the backdrop and I'm selecting a few polys in the in the sort of center of that which are also going to be things that uh, that's going to to hit on so we create uh, two separate bits of geometry first of all we've got these bits of the letters you can see them here which are the things that the snow is going to stick to uh, and then separately we're eliminating the bits of the geometry where the geometry that the particles are going to slide, which is these sort of sloping bits of geometry. So having got both of those things, we can bring them back into our auto.network and we can use two different pop collision detect nodes to ensure that the particles interact properly. So the first of those is for the sticking. So we can see when I take off the, the bypass of this, we can see that geometry. And what we should see is this, the particles come down and then after a while a few of them hit this geometry and they turn red. And the reason they're turning red is because uh, we are colouring the hits. So this node here is detecting those collisions. Uh, what it's doing is ensuring that the particles stick when they hit. We want to enable move to hit because that ensures that the particles actually are on the surface. Uh, I create a group called Just Hit. I, I don't think I in fact use that. And we color the hits. The next thing we do is use the sliding uh, collision. So this is, you can see there's extra faces have arrived. Uh, and this is pretty pretty similar, um, but the, the snow is going to slide down those surfaces like so. Uh, and then the last thing I do on this is I've got a big box around the whole simulation so the snow that doesn't hit any of this geometry and just falls down that'll get deleted which is important because uh, it's um, otherwise you get a lot of a lot of particles and that slows down your, your simulation so that's pretty much all that happens for the first uh, 240 frames so let me go up to frame 240 and at frame 240 we've got a switch node here and this is one way that you can animate to choose between two different pop simulations and the switch node simply switches the input from this one to this one after frame 240. So what's happening in this second uh, node here? Well uh, the first thing we do is create a pop stream and this is essentially a group and all I'm doing is I'm including the particles that are in a bounding object. And here's our bounding object. Let me go up uh, and let's look at wireframe view. In fact, let's uh, move up. And uh, the bounding object, let me just turn off the display of the snowflakes a second. We can see. And the bounding object is this animated sphere, like so. And all that happens is that moves through our scene along a path which I've defined earlier. There you can see the path. And any particles that are going to be inside this sphere are going to start to blow away. So that's what allows us to sort of blow the particles a bit by bit across the scene. So let me turn off the display of that and go back to our auto.network. So what we're doing is we're taking 
the particles that are in that sphere. Uh, and then we're looking at the ones that are also stuck. So the wind particles are the ones that are in the sphere. And so we take the wind particles and we have a look at the ones that are stuck. And this little snippet of code here is saying, if they are stuck, this attribute, the stuck attribute, will be one, and therefore we put them in the group. So that's going to be all these red particles. And then what we do is we pop replicate. And the reason we pop replicate is because it's then quite easy to add a little bit of random jump, random velocity and so on to these particles. So we're essentially just duplicating these particles and we're killing the original particle. So any of these stuck particles that are inside that sphere, they're going to be regenerated with a random, a random uh, velocity, slight velocity upwards. And then we merge the two streams together. So everything now is going to apply to the particles in the sphere and these particles that have been replicated. So we add a little bit more drag. So we change the life here. Uh, let's have a little bit of a look at this. This is applying just to those wind particles, the ones that are inside the sphere. And we've added a, an attribute here using using this uh, edit parameter interface. And we've called it afterlife. And I've given it a value of three. In this case, it's three seconds. So if the current life is larger than three seconds, then we set age back to something close to zero, so between 0 to 0 0.5. And we change life uh, to the minimum of the current life and afterlife, which is three. So when particles first come into this uh, node, they're going to have a life of 100, because that's the default uh, that they get when they're first born. And so if the life is greater than 100, then we're going to reset the age to zero. Uh, it's greater than three rather they're going to reset the age to zero and then we're going to set the life to either three or if the life is already less than three just what uh, just what the life is so that means that as this node applies to particles that have already been affected essentially that it doesn't do anything because the the life of those particles will already be less than three so so this won't have any effect so that's changing the life so those particles are going to disappear pretty quickly once we've once they're born then we add a little bit of uh, wind again, slightly different parameters for that. Uh, and uh, that wind is going to primarily drive the, the particles up and to the right, because that's the wind velocity here with a little bit of noise. And that's the thing that is going to give you the effect here of the particles uh, being sort of blown away. Wait a second, that's not, there we are. That's not working. So that's uh, that's the uh, that's the uh, network here. The only other thing is that I've animated gravity, so that it. Uh, we can look at this in the channel editor. So let me just drag this along, and we can see that uh, it starts off with a force of minus nine point eight, and then at frame two forty, shoots down to to naught pretty quickly. So those. Uh, that snow is going to stop falling down and start being blown away. And again, we use the pop limit here to ensure that the particles that fly outside the box are killed. So what happens uh, when we want to render this? Well, uh, we need to bring the particles in. This node here, this source particles node, is created by the shelf tool. We set up our particle network by selecting the emitter and then selecting the source particles tool here and that's created this node and inside this node I create a group of all the particles that are stuck uh, and then in fact I divided uh, the particles into the groups that are the stuck particles and the non-stuck particles because I initially wanted to render them in a different way but in fact I'm rendering all the particles in the same way and so I'm just bringing those into this snowflakes node and the snowflakes node merges in 
those particles, from the source particles, it then uses a point wrangle to add a random scale between 0.5 and 1, a p-scale attribute to each of those particles. And then I cache everything out, so I render 400 frames worth of data out into some cache files here, and then I read them back in. And the reason I do that is it just means that while you're testing, uh, or rather, it, it, when I do that, it means that when you're rendering out, it, it can be done more quickly. And you'll notice that I've got something here called render with take, and it's on that high density uh, take that I um, that I sh showed you earlier, which means that we're getting 300 particles per frame birthed rather than just 10. Uh, and then we read in the cache, read in the file that's been written out here, and we copy uh, a slightly adapted sphere onto each of those points. And I'm using the pack geometry uh, option here, which is new in Houdini 13, and that means that I can display these uh, these particles as a point cloud, uh, which is much uh, much quicker, uh, places less of a burden on Houdini than if we were rendering in the 3D view all of these spheres. Uh, but of course, when it's rendered, uh, you're actually going to get the spheres, not just the points. So that's pretty much it. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, how it's done. The only thing that's special about the rendering is I'm using a uniform volume for the snowflakes, and you'll have seen my uh, tutorial on uniform volumes, but uh, in this case uh, you need to add uh, a uniform volume. Uh, it's not it's not here, this attribute, uh, normally. You need to open up this uh, edit the rendering, par rendering parameters, and if you search for uniform, like so, you will see that under sampling you would need to click this and then add it. Of course, I've already done that. Uh, and what this does is it tells uh, Mantra to look at this little sphere as if it was a volume, uh, a little ball of smoke, in other words. And you need to use a particular shader for this, and that's called a uniform volume shader. Uh, and down here in the uh, shop, I've got uh, that. So we've got a uniform volume shader. Uh, at the moment, I'm not uh, getting the snow to cast any any shadows. Uh, now you might want to change that. Uh, if you thought that looked unrealistic, you can change that. So that's pretty much uh, how this works, and uh, I hope that's been useful.